Today I'll be talking about firearm safety and I'll give some examples on how you inadvertently might violate them and give some insights on what is considered good etiquette when visiting a shooting range. So the first uh, rule is to always keep your firearm pointed into a safe direction. So what do we mean by this? Let us assume we're at the range, this is down range, right? And we got our buddy with us, right? We're new shooters or whatever, and we're shooting, we're shooting, and we hit like bullseye, and we're like, whoa, did you see my shot? And it's just human that if you want to talk to somebody, right? You, you look at them or you face them. So what I did is I turned my torso to the left, and now I'm actually flagging the guy to my left, or even my buddy if I fully turn my upper body or even my whole person. So this is why it's important to always be aware of where your muzzle is pointing and at the range it should just point downwards. And the same goes for uh, when you're moving or walking with your firearm. Um, in this case it really depends on the country and the, the range itself but what you shouldn't do is like walk around and point somewhere in front of you or walk around like this, this is front, the firearm should always point downwards. And the same goes for a rifle. Depending on the country, at least here, what they want to see at the more, let's say, public ranges, as we learned in the military, <coughs> you hold your rifle like this, and basically the rest of the rifle then rests on your right shoulder. But yeah, just don't point it in the front, it should point directly down or up. The second rule is to treat all firearms as if they were loaded. So let's assume another scenario. Your buddy comes over and is like, hey, did you see my cool new clock? You want to hold it? And you're like, yeah, sure. And he's like, don't worry, it's unloaded. So um, until you actually made sure on your own that this is the case, the firearm's unloaded, you treat it as if it's loaded. What does that mean? How do you make sure the firearm's unloaded? You remove the magazine and, right, the magazine's empty, so we're good to go, right? Uh, not quite, the shit, uh, can still be one in the chamber. So what you should do is also rack the slide, check the chamber, nothing in there, magazine's empty, and now you know you have an unloaded firearm. Uh, one way to show this at a shooting range is obviously if you're not shooting with this or your firearm, we you have more than one with you. Uh, let's assume this is the gun, uh, the firearm rest or the table in front of you. Uh, you want to have the slide in the rearward position so everybody can see this firearm is empty. Uh, some rifles, like the AK platform, most of them, and some pistols, you won't be able to have the slide in the rearward position because it just goes forward on its own again. So what you can do is use one of those flags, you shove it in the chamber, and now everybody knows this firearm is safe. <coughs> And just another addition to this, let's assume again this is our imaginary um, table in front of us. The safety's on if you can, flag is in there, slides open, and you don't want to do this and have stuff like lying around. Everything should point downwards and should be neat. People will just uh, feel safer around you, right? It's just being, uh, just being tidy. So the third rule is to keep your finger outside of the guard, trigger guard, and off the trigger until you are ready to fire. So what that means is I'm off the trigger, right? Well, I'm not ready to fire yet, I'm off the trigger, but this doesn't count because, or this, because what happens if somebody shoots left and right, and you're kind of not anticipating it, and you get frightened, New shooters might do it, even shooters that are used to it. Somebody fires a 50 cal and you're like, Ugh. what happened? I just pulled the trigger because what happens if you get scared or you get startled? You might do this, right? So this is why it's important to not have your finger in the trigger guard, even if it's not on the trigger, not outside or on the trigger guard, just put it up here. Same goes for rifles, not here, not here, up here. So even if you get startled, you're not directly reaching into or landing on the trigger itself. So the fourth rule is to be sure of your target and what lies behind it. And I mean at the shooting range, you got your paper target here, the one on your left, the one on your right. And while those guys might give you a hard time if you start shooting their targets, it's not that bad, right? But let's assume we're somewhere outside and 
you're hunting boars and you hear something rustling in the bush where the boar just went. You can't assume that it is the boar, it might be a hiker, so you really need to be aware of your target and um, when it comes to what is behind, um, most calibers might go through the target, so it's important to know what is behind the target. And if you're shooting outside on an outdoor range, or you made one in your backyard, you need to know what is behind. Um, maybe you have a small target, maybe the rifle will overpenetrate and hit your neighbor, or you're on an outdoor range and you're aiming too high and it goes over the target, you don't know what is behind there. So that's all things you have to consider before you actually fire a shot. So better safe than sorry, as always. The next rule, and those were the gold, four golden rules, or I want to add them to, and it's about protecting yourself. And this is also a thing when you go to ranges indoor, right? You always have to e wear ear protection. Also, I really do recommend to wear eye protection too. So ear protection is kind of obvious, right? Loud bang, your ears go beep uh, the rest of your life. So protect your ears, they're very valuable and good ear pro doesn't cost that much. Uh, for glasses, you don't know what comes flying at you. It might be uh, an empty casing or some dirt that you kicked up while shooting outdoors. Um, it's just generally a good idea to have some kind of protective glasses. Even if you already wear glasses, get some that uh, offer some kind of um, mechanical um, protection against some mechanical force. Then. Other things you should consider is, and this is also a thing at the range or wherever, if you pull the trigger and the gun doesn't go off and you know the firearm was loaded before, don't just charge again and fire again because there's so many things that could have happened. Um, unless you're a real professional, just put the gun down, pointing in a safe direction and get help of somebody supervising the range. Um, there might be a squib loads and you got the projectile still in your barrel and when you're gonna shoot again the barrel's blocked and you're gonna blow up your gun, hurt your hand or even worse. Um, so if you're unsure and you're having a malfunction unless you actually really really know what you're doing and you know the weapon system get help there's there's no reason why you should be afraid of asking for help. Put the gun down and uh, ask somebody that is in charge and they should be able to solve this issue for you without any fuss. So this is all there is to it. Um, if there's any questions, I'll gladly answer them in the comments, and as always, stay safe and have fun.